Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK. And you know, when I started this journey, I thought, well, I started off as Dark Shades and I thought I was meant to talk about relationships and I started doing that for a while. And then I thought, okay, let me look into what's happening with the black world. And so every now and then I still do that because it's still very relevant and it's very important that our... Um, that black people are waking him up to what's going on. But now I kind of feel as though um, I'm here to kind of support anyone who's being disadvantaged, regardless of the race and colour. And that's why um, I'm just going to go with whatever topic I feel is appropriate. Yes, I know there's needs all over the place. And I get plenty of um, emails for which I'm grateful um, asking me to talk on various subjects. There are some subjects that are a bit rep repetitive and if I don't have solutions, I, I just don't see no point in regurgitating the same information, the same negative information over and over again. So sometimes um, when, I, when you send me suggestions, please send me some solutions so that I can work with that and then do my research from there to see how, you know, viable the solutions are. Anyway, enough of that. Thank you all for subscribing, sharing and all that kind of thing. I wanted to talk once again about um, the system, in quotes. Um, the more I... You know, they say when the teacher, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And um, a few months ago, I did a video um, talking about the EU leaving, um, the UK wanting to leave the EU so we wouldn't have any more human rights. And then I did a couple of um, videos, one recently on universal credit, one several months ago on universal credit, both more or less saying the same thing, but not I was touching on um, what's happening, but not quite touching on it because I wasn't quite aware. I guess because I haven't claimed it. The nearest I've got to universal credit was when I was made redundant and I tried to claim the doll and it was hell. So that's the nearest. So I, you have to be in it to know what people are experiencing. So this is really, first of all, for new people who are going to claim and also for those who are claiming. The changes um, with the job seekers allowance and what is what it actually means, what whether or not this is just another form of big, big brother. Now, first of all, um, I think last month, um, the Citizens Advice Bureau was given four million pounds to um, work with claimants on the universal credit. So anybody who had problems with universal credit, they could go to the um, Citizens Advice Bureau and they would help them with the forms. Now, on the surface, it sounds like a very good idea. However, if the claimant didn't have all the forms that were required or necessary, it meant that the Citizens Advice Bureau would have to send them away and then they would go off and get the documents and whenever they had those documents ready, they would go back to the Citizens Advice Bureau. The Citizens Advice Bureau would then um, complete the forms and send them off. The only difference is, is that with the old system, your claim would start from the initial interview the initial meeting so that means you would get paid from the time you actually made the application with the citizens advice bureau however it's from the time that all of you have all of those papers so if you've gone back two three four times if it's taken you three four five months to get all those papers together it's only when all those papers are together that you get start getting the benefits and even then you still have to wait six weeks on top of all of that so that means you are losing out on money. So that's the first thing. So the, you're dealing with people who are already struggling to go, um, to have to go on the dole. You're already at a low ebb. Nobody wants to go on the dole these days. It is so humiliating and degrading.
and they've made it worse. They, they make, you know, the media talks about sponges. They talk about, you know, people, um, um, what you call it? Sponges. They say you're drug, ad drug addicts. You know, they call us all, well, call people who go on the dole all the names under the sun to make them feel uncomfortable, to make them feel unworthy and to make them feel like failures. So that they're already going into that system feeling vulnerable and negative. And a lot of people who've never uh, been on the dole before, they still believe that because they have been working all their lives, they have respect they're a bit better than the other people who have been on the dole all their lives so they go in there with this kind of not really a pompous attitude but an attitude where I'll get respect because they'll be able to see I've worked all my life and I've paid into the system but it doesn't work like that you are just a number and you are a burden to the resources you are a burden to society that's how they see you when you walk through that door. Not regardless of how much money you have put in to pay for this moment where you need help, it doesn't matter. They have targets to fill. Their targets are, let's see how many people we can get out to work. Let's see how many people we do not have to give universal credit to. And, you know, in one of my videos, I was saying that, you know, they've given, they started piloting the universal credit, I think about four years ago, four or five years ago. I went to the initial meeting before it came out. And when I went to that initial meeting, I said to them, I said to them, look, you're going to be giving lump sum to people who have never had a lump sum, who have never had to budget their um, income because you've paid their council tax, you've paid their bills, you've paid their gas and electricity, you've paid their rent and the money you've given them is for them to spend. Now you're going to give them a lump sum and they now after years and years and years of being spoon fed, they are now going to have to pay their way. And what they said, I said they're not going to be able to pay their rent. You know what they said? If they don't pay their rent, and that's the most important thing for them, they will be rendered um, intentionally homeless, whether they've got kids or not. That was the response. So they've given this money to people who they know is un who are unable to manage money. They've got no training, nothing. So where am I going with this? What's going to happen now is that a lot with the universal credit, you're going to have all of the benefits under one umbrella. Everybody's going to pl be placed on the un umbrella of being a sponger off the, on the dole, that negative connotation the name that you do not like, the name that maybe even you, when you were working, called people who went on the dole. You are going to be relegated to that title because whether it's because you're supplementing your income, whether it's because, um, you know, you're getting um, job seekers allowance, whether on disability allowance, housing allowance, whatever it is, it goes under one umbrella. Um, under that umbrella of universal credit, whereas with all the others, when it was separate, you could claim emergency, um, disaster funds and all kinds of stuff. You can't do that with universal credit. Universal credit is one, it's one, um, it's one fund and it comes with conditions. And God forbid, if you do not meet any of those conditions, you are sanctioned. They take money away from the little that they're giving you. When you, the first time you go, especially if you're desperate, they're going to say to you, oh, um, this is going to take six to eight weeks, maybe a bit longer for us to give you money, but we can give you a loan and you have to pay that out of your universal credit, your income when you get it. So you're already starting on, uh, on a negative so before you even get the money, they're putting you in debt again. And you're probably already in debt when you go there because you're waiting so long to get the money. But you, more or less, and you have to be careful about that because you have people 
roaming outside the job centres, looking for people, pretending they're from Universal Credit and offering loans and they're nothing to do with it. So please do not liaise or talk to anybody outside that building. I'm just throwing that in there. But my point is, is that you're already at a disadvantage. And they have, they, there's no longer a job seekers agreement anymore. They have something called a claimant commitment. And in that claimant commitment, you are committing to do certain things. And it's a bit like um, filling up one of those um, indefinite leave to remain forms. If they say bring six documents for six months, you have to bring six documents for six months. Similarly, if they say you have to look for work on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, and even if on Monday you you looked at 200 jobs and on Tuesday you only looked at four and you didn't look at any on Wednesday and then you looked at 400 on Thursday and then you looked at 75 on Friday, you, you've breached your agreement with them because you didn't look at any on Wednesday and they can sanction you for that and they can take away your money. The only thing with when they um, sanction you, you can go to your local council and tell them, look, this is how much I've been stopped and I need help with my housing benefit or I need help with my council tax or whatever they can help you with. That's the only, that's the only kind of saving grace. But God knows how long that's going to take. So when you, when you, um, if it is the first time you're going to the job seekers allowance, don't overcommit. Sometimes when you're going there, you feel desperate and they say, oh, can you do this? And, and they've got this little nice face on them. Then you remember, they're not on your side. They're not on your side. All they're out to do is get you through the door and get you out, get them off the books and pay you as little as possible. So when they're smiling with you or whatever they're doing, some of them look as miserable as sin. But when they're, if, they're, if you've got a smiley one and she says, oh, so what are you prepared to do? For God's sake, don't say I'm prepared to do anything. For God's sake, don't click tick everything. Don't sign anything too quickly. If they give you a document, say, listen, even though it's going to delay your, your income, say, I'm going to have to go away and read this and I'll bring it back. Because if you overcommit and you do not do everything in there and it's all little writing, it's like what we call small print. And if you haven't um, done anything, even one thing that you've committed to do, you've broken your commitment with regard to universal credit. They can sanction you and they can stop your money. They can stop elements of it. I don't know which elements they can stop. But the thing what's happening here is that, you know what else? You know, because they're saying they're trying to get people out to work. They're encouraging people to take zero, zero hour contracts. And the, um, the job seekers, so they can say, oh, yeah, there's a lot of people back to work, back to work, because they're sending them out on job on zero hour contracts. What's happening now is that you go into you go into the um, job center and you say, I can't get any work. Um, I need to sign on or whatever it is you do. They'll say to you, what kind of work do you do? And you'll say, OK, I'm a construction worker. I'm a mechanic. I'm a painter, I'm a carpenter, whatever it is. And then what they'll do is, if they, they'll um, set you up on this electronic system. Nothing is in writing. You're not talking to anybody anymore. They'll set you up on this system. And on this system, it, it would tell them, and please don't give them access to your, to your account your universal match, job match account, whatever you do, don't give them any access to that because then you will be sanctioned. But yes, yeah, so what they do then is they say, okay, um, we've got a carpenter's job in Hertfordshire. Um, they need somebody for three hours. And then we need somebody in Luton. Um, they need somebody for two hours. We need somebody in... Um, Milton Keynes and they need somebody for five hours tomorrow and you're going all over the place. You, you're spending your fares. They don't compensate you for your fares. And and if you refuse, it's going to show that you're un, unwilling to work. 
and yet you're going for zero hours they make it look as though okay you you might they might ask you to stay on longer you might get longer hours they might even ask you it might say three hours now but if you work well they might keep you longer or they send you on something that's supposed to be 25 hours and when you got there and you've done about five hours or maybe 10 hours they say oh we don't need you anymore and they send you home so there's no stability in those zero hour contracts and yet you've cut they've taken you off of the books in order to send you on that zero hour contract so you're no longer signed on and then they're saying oh well we'll supplement you whatever you don't with you get whatever you don't get with universal credit the thing is with that is that they've tied you in you're beholden to them because they now govern every little income that you need you need them and and you need to do what they say you're like a bloody puppet and everything is on the phone. You have to have a phone in order to do it. They can tell um, companies to call you and tell, say they need somebody on this particular job on this particular day. And if you don't go, they'll, they'll sanction you so you don't get any money. There are so many people homeless and destitute because they didn't feel it was worth their while going to one place that's out of their remit or out of their area only for a couple of hours because what the what the job seeker or what the work representative or whatever you call them is saying is that you're not showing willingness to work it's it's absolutely terrible and this is the direction that universal credit is going it's going to have a lot of people either destitute or homeless whatever you're not going to have enough income to pay for your basic needs and the thing is is that the, you know they, they're holding you to ransom because if you don't do what they say and what you've committed to do maybe inadvertently or otherwise because you didn't read it properly you can be sanctioned and your money is stopped or reduced and then you still have to pay that loan that they gave you when you first signed on. So God forbid, I mean, I don't know where we're going. I don't know what's happening. Um, did I write any notes here that I might have forgotten? I did say you're selling your soul to get universal credit and by all means try because it's another way of them. You know, it's another way of them monitoring every single thing you do. Because you get up in the morning and they say to you, and another thing, if you put on that form that you are a painter, you are a mechanic, you are a carpenter, you are a construction worker. And in their papers and in all their paperwork that they have on the system, there's been a carpenter or an, a construction worker or a mechanic in their, in their numbers and you have not applied for that particular job. They sanction you because they're saying you we had a job here and you didn't apply for it this I don't know what's happening I don't well I do know what's happening it's um, it's enslavement regardless of the color is the enslavement of the poor you've put people who have put themselves they haven't even put themselves in this position they have been put in this position through loss of jobs, through all the kinds of what, things that are happening in society today, why people can't get work, through deindustrialization, through um, the UK selling off businesses, through debt, whatever it is, through putting up the, um, the minimum wage so employers can't play it, pay it. All of those things are contributing to people not being in work and they've got the damn nerve to say it's immigration immigration might pay a small part but it's not the story it's not the true story it's just uh, uh something to wave in front of you so you can get angry at the wrong people that's what that's about but i think you'll know well the thing is when you're in that position you are going to get angry at people you think are to blame because you're going to feel desocialized you're going to feel as though you've been put down because of other people but it's a it's a it's bigger than that it's got nothing it's 
immigration has got marginal to do with this. This is all to do with their poor management of money, sending out money to pay for warships and goodness knows what else. Poor debt, paying those people in high government hundreds and thousands of pounds while people are starving, living in big properties. That's what, that's what that is. They really wanted to solve the problems of this world. All those millionaires would be donating and helping people. So that's not the that's not the issue, folks. We are not the issue. And the thing is, the sooner we uh, we work together and try to understand what is going on and why things aren't working and why things seem so dire, the better it is. Instead of pointing fingers at each other when we're all in the same boat. <sighs> that's all for now. Bye bye.